we searched for a man named Jim Sonnet. And the legends folks tell may be true. Most call him gunman and killer. He's my son, who I hardly knew. I raised Jim's boy from the cradle. Till the day he said to me, I have to go find my father. And I reckoned that's how it should be. So we ride, Jim's boy and me. setting down to a hot supper again. It's been three weeks now, Grandpa. He'd have been in the high country, would have heard something by now. Well, your pa ain't going around wearing a sign around his neck, Jeff. Finish that off. We'll be wanting an early start in the morning. I got a little more to go here. Finish it upstairs. I'm sick of getting slopped over. You'll be drunk in the territory. Come on. Guns down there, Sonny. Nice and easy, like. Come on, I ain't gonna wait all night for you. Make up your minds. I'm too old and tired to sit up and discuss it. Put it away, Lando. You'd be smart if you put that down. At least till you hear what we got to say. Maybe you'll talk better without these. We hear you've been trailing Jim Sonnet. Now, that could be very unhealthy. Why so? Well, we happen to be a friend of Jim's. Have been for a long time. We wouldn't want to see any harm come to him. Well, what makes you think we mean harm to him? Most people looking for him usually do. Well, now, it seems to me if you know James, you'd have recognized the resemblance. I'm Wilson at James's father. And this here's his son, Jeff. You got proof you're who you say you are? Well, you take a long look at Jeff there. I believe that's proof enough. You know where my Paul might be? I know where he'll be. We're going to meet him in three days. Now, you're welcome to ride along if you'd like to. We'll be leaving in a half hour. Well, what do you think, Grandpa? Well, you can't tell whether a bird's a sparrow or a vulture until you get close up to him. I guess that means we're going, huh? I reckon so. They ain't gonna come. That old man's too smart. You'll come. Having an old rattlesnake along ain't gonna make it any easier, especially when we hit that town. We ain't going to that town. That's Jim Sonnet's town. I just leave you to our own deck and our own table. All right, Gaines, keep going. I don't know, Rick. A man like Jim Sonnet. Oh, he ain't gonna mess with the likes of you. Now, you just give him this message. You tell him Hanley's got his old man and his son. And if he don't come out to Devil's Fork by 12 o'clock Thursday, I'll have him buried by one.
Hold it up here. This looks like a good place. JJ, you take the first watch. Somebody else take over when supper's at. Good boy. Give me some firewood. Bev, you take care of the animals. You a good hand with a cook fire, Mr. Sonnet? I'll help the boy get wood. He ain't buying it, Rick. Well, he's here, ain't he? And we're gonna keep him here. Jim Sonnet ain't gonna walk into Devil's Fork with his eyes closed. Now, we don't have those two to show him. You're gonna earn that $200 I'm paying you. I ain't never seen Jim Sonnet, but he sure enough put you up a tree. You dumb knothead. Jim Sonnet could take you and not look back to see what he stepped on. Now, you keep your notions to yourself and just follow my orders. The objections, Lando? When I got them, you'll find out without asking. <laughs> Dandy fire, son. It smoke got much higher than treetops. Ain't hard to figure where Jim got a lot of his savvy. Oh, he learned quick enough. Lots of things. Patsy can smell smoke five miles, you know. Jim's got so he could smell it in three. I reckon I ain't never been in Patsy country. Five miles, huh? Well, that put a man in the whole wreck will start. That depends on the man. Me, I can smell an Apache for six miles. No brag, just fake. I see an Apache outrun a team of horses, pull a man right down off a buckboard. Well, James was never much for running. Had a lazy streak. I guess he got that from his mother's side. I've heard Jim Sonnet made a, over 100 miles in less than 24 hours, half dragging a dying horse part of the way. I don't figure a lazy man could manage that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, maybe he's outgrown it. He already said it was just because he didn't figure on being no Apache. Not with them blue eyes like his pa's. Well, isn't that peculiar, Mr. Sonnet? The man I know has brown eyes. Hmm. Good effect. Well, maybe he outgrowed the blue eyes, too. Coffee will be boiling in a bit. Get yourself some sleep, boy. As soon as I have my coffee, I'll be joining you. I'll watch him for spell and give you the job. Yes, sir. I'm a little tucker to wait for coffee anyway. They know sure enough, Grandpa. Paul does have brown eyes, don't he? Just like his ma, Jeff. Always did. <laughs> Fancy carved guns of yours, Mr. Sonnet. That's mighty good carving. I wonder if it really makes a difference, like everybody says. Feels comfortable. Toss it back over here, Henry, and I'd be pleased to give you a demonstration. <laughs> good grip. Might just mean that little extra. You've seen that little extra, have you? I've seen Jim Sonnet use a gun, if that's what you mean. Well, he's good. But I'm the best. Well, it's not hard to prove drawing again an unarmed man. No, I... I want you to keep breathing, Sonnet. At least for a while. Till I use this fancy gun of yours against your boy. About an hour till sun up. Let's try it. Grandpa, I'm sorry I let you down. I was supposed to keep watch. He figures to kill us, you know? Yeah, well, whatever he figures, Jeff, it's a long trip between figuring and doing. Hold it. All right, let's let him cool a little bit.
<laughs> You're the one they call Lando, ain't you? Never mind what they call me. Well, I was just thinking I hid that name somewhere. Supposed to be mighty good with a handgun, the fella I hate about. I keep alive. Yeah, well, so far, anyways. <laughs> Kill Hanley there uses you to get rid of my boy James. Shut up, old man. Get back over there. <laughs> you bet. Seems a shame, though. Hanley, I mean. He figures to be number one once he gets James Sonnet out of the way. Of course, he can't leave no witnesses around to say how he done it. Sonnet's got a payroll. That's why I'm going after him. That's what Hanley told you, huh? Yes, sir, he's a smart one. But most important to him is reputation as the man that got James Sonnet. Yes, sir, that's what he's after. And like I said, no witnesses. Make a break for it, huh? Yeah, we'll do something, boy. But right now we gotta stay with them till we get where they're headed. Remember, the bar will be there. Yeah. In an ambush. Horses sure ain't gonna take us to Devil's Fork in a month of Sundays, much less by Thursday. These are the best that livery stable had. You sure tell you don't know anything about saddle mounts. The way you've been pushing, it's lucky we come this far. And I'll keep on pushing. There's just so much a man will take for a lousy $200, Hanley. Say one more word. Either one will do. Just said easy, Jeff. Them fellas want a little spat. It's no hide off on us. Oh, man, you've been shooting off your mouth. Look out! You're some good with my weapon, Mr. Hanley. I don't reckon you need no more practice. You keep shooting off your mouth. I'll get some more practice with your weapon. Now, you get moving. You'll have to overlook my grandson's manners, not saying you're welcome for saving your life. Oh, I'll thank him, Grandpa. I'm going to help him find his Paul, and I'm going to bury him alongside of him. And you on the other side. <laughs> if we impose on you folks. We heard shooting. Uh, look, I don't want no trouble here. No, neither do I. See, we're lawmen, and we're taking these two men down the Green River. They put up a fight. Yeah, we're a couple of bad ones, sure enough. I, I don't want no trouble. We'd just like to trade our tired stock for some of yours, maybe have a meal, you know, get a couple hours rest. Well, li like I said, I don't want no trouble here, so you just mount on up and move them out. We're coming inside, you dumb farmer. Now, you put that gun down. Look, law, man or not, nobody comes inside a man's house. You better look off to your left. You said it. We didn't cause no trouble. Sit down. Just sit down. Everything's going to be fine. You get us some good horses, boy. I got what they had. We 
got near two hours to wait till noon. I don't reckon you fellas could stand some hot coffee, huh? Why don't you stop thinking so hard, Grandpa? You ain't gonna be on no fire to warn your boy off. Warn him off? <laughs> Why, he's figuring on us being here, ain't he? You planned it like that, didn't you, Hanley? Hanley? Go ahead and make the coffee. Besides, the last thing in the world I want to do is scare him off. His gun's the only thing that's going to keep me and the boy breathing regularly. Jeff, get the coffee making, huh? I'll get the fixings. You stay out here in the open. Hey, Jay, you watch him. I'd forget about Jim Sonnet's gun helping the old man. He ain't apt to get a chance to use it. Yeah, maybe. Maybe not. But with so much money at stake, I don't figure any son of mine would be dumb enough to ride in here now, do you? All by yourself? What are you talking about? With what money? You gonna listen to that lying old man? There ain't no money. Now, you tell him there ain't no money. Well, I don't know about no money. It's just what that Lando fella said. Before you killed him, that is. He ain't gonna work, old man. Now, you just make that coffee and keep shut. tries to live as long as he can. That's how I look at it. I try to do everything I can along in that direction. Say, this fire needs a mite build enough. Well, you get right back up here, both of you, or we can keep an eye on you. We're mighty obliged to you, Mr. Sonnet. <laughs> Make all this nice, fine coffee for us. We'll be all primed and proper and ready for your son when he gets here. <laughs> <laughs> I'll blow his head off. Good brew a powerful, strong cup of coffee. You know, that's got a good feel. But I think I'd rather have my own. Coming on dusk. Well, he didn't come. How many things could have stopped him? Not getting Hanley's message? Trouble along the way? Not believing it? That's most likely it. Would you believe a message like that? Meet me at Devil's Fork? I got your par and son? Huh? Would you? You, you think he would have come, Grandpa? Well, no way of knowing, boy. After all this time, but... But if I was to bet one way or another, I bet he'd have come. If he'd have known we needed him. Well, which way, Grandpa? Oh, I don't reckon it matters much, since we don't know no more about one road than we do the other. See any hawks flying? So our paths will cross in thy own way, divine. 